PhD student I was supposed to meet with like three weeks to a month ago finally got back to me and rescheduled but of course that wasn't until after I made an appointment with my current abstract math professor to talk to him about the same things. So I sat down with the PhD student today and I'm going to sit down with my professor sometime next week. I didn't really have a lot of time to get a word in edgewise because as soon as he started talking he didn't stop but that's alright you know he's not going anywhere I'm not going anywhere I can always shoot him an email and he he said he basically had an open door policy and I can just walk in anytime and, and chat which is cool. So rather than putting a caveat on everything I say in this video I'll just say right now all of this is the opinion of one PhD student um, who already has their master's degree who was already taught in the the public and private sector and yeah so these, these are his opinions I'm gonna state them as fact just for the for the sake of time and brevity number one the type of degree you should get should depend ultimately on your end goal so if you want to uh, be a community college teacher or a high school teacher then a master's is good for you or even if you just want to go in the private sector a uh, master's is good or in his words a master's is great but if you want to further into the knowledge base and do research and get paid to do research then academia is the place for you and you basically need a PhD to do that. But by no means is a master's chopped liver so this guy, we'll call him Bob, said that even since he's been in his PhD program he's been getting a lot of calls and has actually gone on several interviews across the country because people want him just because he has a master's degree for for teaching jobs and otherwise. So he said there's still a, a very high demand for people with masters in math out in the world. So it, it's still great. Two, it's gonna take literally all of your time. Bob said that he spent eight to 10 hours a day during his master's degree, which took him two years, which seems to be the average. And he spends 15 to 18 hours a day in his current PhD program every day without fail. It is his entire life. He does literally nothing else. And that's what it takes. Are you, he said there's, um, there's a lot of people who squeak by with B's and they're okay with that. If they're just getting, want the piece of paper, their diploma, just to go work in the private sector. And they're not as concerned with true deep understanding and complete mastery, then you can do that. Um, but if you really want to understand it and get and get all the way into something until you're an expert um, It's gonna take a very very large. It's gonna take all of your time. It's gonna take all of your time He heeded that warning uh, several times many times actually brought up the fact that his advisor his marriage ended because of his career a lot of his friends got divorced over their uh, masters and PhD programs and a lot of other people's marriages went went down the toilet because of their careers and I brought up the fact that I was military and he said well maybe you understand better than most people but just know that it's gonna be hard like I promise you and I was like alright fair point uh, I'll take it into consideration for three I already kind of said this before but a master's is great for a job um, but a PhD is amazing uh, apparently there's a very high demand for mathematicians and a low supply so even if you don't have a PhD, you can still get a great job somewhere and basically have your choice of the lot. Four, go ahead and do a PhD, but get it paid for. So a lot of, it seems to be very commonplace for people to go from their bachelor straight to a PhD program. And in the process of their PhD program, they will get a master's degree, or at the very least, they will complete the equivalent uh, of a master's degree so that if they decide to drop out of a PhD program, they can still graduate with a master's degree if that's uh, what they decide they want to do instead. So it's um, it's pretty commonplace. I, I would almost say the industry standard, but I don't know if it's across the board true. But a lot of places will uh, pay for a master's degree so long as you are a, a TA, a teaching assistant, if you teach classes. In addition to that, a lot of them will pay you a little bit of money. Bob said he makes like 15 grand a year but he's also a PhD student, so that might be a little more than what a master's student uh, GTA gets paid, so take that with a grain of salt. Uh, but a lot of places will pay for students to get PhDs. Um, I don't know what the caveat to that is, whether you have to be a full-time uh, professor in addition to that, or after you graduate you owe them some time. I don't know, I have to look into that if I decide I wanna go that route. Five, competitiveness for getting into a master's or PhD program isn't very high unless you wanna to go to a top tier school 
whether that's you know maybe Caltech or MIT or Princeton or any other Ivy League school, you'll probably get in as long as you have decent grades and you don't get ruined by the, uh, what's that, the GRE that you have to take. Six, you don't have to know what you like right now. You don't need to figure out what you wanna do your PhD thesis on when you're an undergraduate. And Bob said that he didn't know what he wanted to write his uh, thesis on until he was already a PhD student. And even then it wasn't until six or 10 months after he started his program when he realized what he wanted to do his on. So even throughout masters, I don't know if he said he uh, did a thesis uh, for his undergraduate, I think he said he did. He said that was like, you know, 10 to 20 pages. But he didn't tell me what it was on or whether that topic was prescribed or something that he chose. Seven, start building a library right now. Uh, Bob suggested a lot of what he considered to be the classics in, in math textbooks. I didn't, I should get him to email me a list and then I can distribute that to you guys. Uh, but he mentioned a lot of names that I'd never heard of, so there's that. But I think even if it's not the classics, it's still a good idea to start building a library when or if you have the funds to do so, which is what I've been doing for, you know, a year, a year and a half now, sl slowly accumulating intro books, excuse me, intro books and other textbooks from authors that I like just to, you know, get your feet wet a little prematurely or preemptively, I should say. Get comfortable with being uncomfortable. A PhD or a master's is definitely hard, it's no joke, but a PhD is even more so. Bob told me there was a lot of times when he just wanted to, to give up because it was so hard and so absolutely consuming that he just didn't think he could take it anymore, but he persevered and, you know, now he's almost done. I guess an average master's degree is two years or so. Average PhD is probably gonna be four to six, depending on your pacing. So that's a long time to spend 15 hours a day doing something. So you have to really have a come to Jesus about whether or not you want to commit that kind of time and that amount of your life to something. So, And lastly, go to a program that has quals. Quals are these tests you have to take. There's a series of them and you have to pass them in order to graduate. So according to Bob, not all programs have quals. Um, I believe some of them just have a thesis, like you choose between one or the other as far as master's degrees go. Uh, PhD, obviously you have to write a thesis. But go to a program that, that has quals and requires people to take those tests. They're, they're harder, they take a very long time to study for, like maybe a year or more, but that's a program that produces better graduates. And so you should, you should opt for the good stuff rather than the easy stuff, especially if you're already in the middle of a master's or a PhD. Uh, so that's all I got for now. Um, I, I didn't have enough time to get much questions in because like I said, Bob just, he started talking and he didn't stop until I was walking out the door. So there'll probably be a follow-up to this and maybe also a follow-up to when I talk to my professor. I hope some of it was informative for you. If you have particular questions you'd like me to ask Bob or my professor, feel free to drop them or DM me on Twitter or however, I don't think any of you even follow me on Twitter, but who knows. And I'll be glad to, to send their way and then come back and give you guys an answer. So thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.